the Nissan 250cc U.S. Motocross Grand Prix is brought to you by Nissan, who invites you to test drive the new go-anywhere Nissan Pathfinder at your Nissan dealer now. The Bell Ray Company. Bell Ray, used when quality and protection make a difference. Honda Motorcycles. Honda, follow the leader. And by Boysen. Boysen Power Reeds, serving the riders of the world. Hello, everyone. I'm Larry Myers, and welcome to the Nissan 250cc U.S. Motocross Grand Prix. It's the classic confrontation. The best motocrossers from Europe against the best from the United States. With me, reporting from trackside and in the pits, is the first American rider to ever beat the Europeans. He's the professor of motocross, Gary Bailey. Gary, you've had the opportunity to race here at Unadilla. Yes, Larry, and it seems like only yesterday whenever I rode here, and I can just about remember every whoop and every jump on the racetrack. This is, without a doubt, is one of the toughest motocross tracks in the world. What makes the Unadilla track so great? Well, I think the thing that the track is extremely fast, it's extremely rough. The loam here, the track really works up nice. They usually get a lot of rain. It's a very rich soil, and if a rider picks the wrong line out on the racetrack, he can easily go over the handlebars. He can lose a lot of time out there. This track is going to bring out the best, I think, in every rider. And the best in every rider is what we're looking for here today at the Nissan 250cc U.S. Grand Prix. Let's take a look at some of the competitors. One of the favorites is 1985 Unadilla champion, Team Honda's Johnny O'Mara. When the track is to O'Mara's liking, he's as tough as anyone in the world. And the Osho likes Unadilla. I would say it's, uh, it's definitely a fast track, but you really got to use, uh, use your head out there. And that's, that's always been good for me because I'm relatively smart when it comes to, you know, picking good lines and stuff like that. So um, I like that part of it being fast and rough and... All, all just like how it is, it's, it's perfect for me. Among the European riders, the heavy favorite is Team Yamaha's Jackie Vamon from France. In last year's event, the Frenchman came to Unadilla in the thick of a points battle for the Grand Prix Championship. His strategy was to race the other Europeans and to ignore the Americans. But this year, Vamon has already wrapped up the 250 world title. There will be no need to hold back. Um, yes, for me, this year it's more easy because uh, I'm no pressure, and my hand is uh, free, so I try very hard to, to come in close to the American riders. The sentimental favorite, though, is Bob Hurricane Hanna. Given his choice of winning any race in the world, the Team Suzuki rider would not hesitate to pick Unadilla. Dear, I've uh, always had bad luck. Ten times I've been here, I've won motos every time. Two years in a row, I broke front brakes off, which has never happened in my career before. I've been knocked down, fell off on my own self. I had bike failures, and, uh, you know, last year was my last year. I really thought I'd have a good chance at it. I had a good bike. I was in shape, and uh, this year was kind of up in the air. I'm back, and I feel pretty good. My bike works excellent. Uh, if I work as well as the bike does, I think we've got a good chance to win it this year, and it'd be a great way to top off a career. Those interviews took place earlier today under bright sunlit skies. But now, as the riders are on the line for the first of two 40-minute motos, a light rain is falling. The start of the Nissan 250 Motocross Grand Prix is only seconds away. The gate drops and moto number one is underway. The international field is being led by Rick Ryan on a Kawasaki from Woodside, California. On Ryan's rear wheel is Team Honda's Johnny O'Mara. Tom Carson from Ohio is third, Canadian Brad King is fourth, and A.J. Whiting from Burbank, California is fifth. Ryan leads the field to the horseshoe at the top side of the track, and A.J. Whiting on the outside passes two riders and takes control of the number three position. Back to the leaders, and Ryan, followed by O'Mara, blast out of gravity cavity. Behind the leaders, the rest of the field, including Bob Hanna, who was running mid-pack, exercise extreme caution on the blind jump. O'Mara, from the number two position, is watching closely the riding style of Rick Ryan. He's thinking of the track ahead and trying to imagine how Ryan will ride it. If he guesses right, he can put himself into position to pass. But so far, Ryan has not left an opening. And O'Mara slides by on the inside. Ryan went a little bit wide, and O'Mara was quick to pounce and moved into first. 
Meanwhile, Bob Hanna, number 22, has moved all the way to sixth. In fifth is number 39, Billy Lyles on a Kawasaki from Jackson, Georgia. Hanna goes to the inside. What a move by Bob Hanna as he puts the pass on Lyles. He reaches up and pulls the roll off to clear mud from his goggles, and Hanna now sets out in pursuit of the number four position, currently occupied by World 250 champion Jackie Bamone from France. Hanna has moved through the pack so quickly that I doubt that Bamone even knows he's there. Bamone is involved in a battle for third with Suzuki's A.J. Whiting. The Frenchman knows it now, and Hanna makes the pass on the outside of the track. The Hurricane has moved from mid-pack and is still charging. At the front of the pack, with no traffic to contend with, O'Mara has opened a huge lead over the rest of the field. The question is, can a charging Bob Hanna catch the fleeing Johnny O'Mara? We'll find that out when we return with the conclusion of moto number one of the Nissan 250cc U.S. Motocross Grand Prix at Unadilla. He rides with voice and power reads to get top performance out of his bike. Acceleration, response, power, and speed. I know real power when I feel it. And if you want more horsepower and better throttle control from your bike, do it the way I do. Boys and Reeds. They're inexpensive and easy to install. Just bolt them on and go with Boys and Reeds. CC US Motocross Grand Prix. While we were away, Bob Hanna continued his charge from mid-back and is now challenging Rick Ryan for the number two position. The two riders blast on the straightaway side-by-side. -side. Hanna, with an outside line, has got the drive and takes over second. The Hurricane has not had a good year. An injury kept him from practicing and competing in the early part of the season. When he returned to competition, his riding lacked his normal charging Bob Hanna style. But not today. The Hurricane, who has hinted retirement, has put in an incredible charge. A charge that has brought him all the way from mid-pack to second. Now Hanna dives into gravity cavity. When he comes out, he'll fly a full 70 feet in the air. The Suzuki that Hanna is riding was prepared especially for him by Ivan Boyson from Boyson Engineering, and Hanna is making that Boyson-prepared Suzuki look good. But at this stage of the race, it doesn't matter how good it looks. First place is still in the hands of the Osho, Johnny O'Mara. O'Mara's lead at this point appears to be an unbeatable one. Hanna possibly recognizing that back, and Hanna almost goes down. What a save by the Hurricane. His miscue could have been caused by slowing the pace. Jackie Bamone in the number three position has closed on Hannah. Let's go to Gary Bailey, who is in the Bamone Pits trackside for a report. Larry, we're back down here in the mechanics area again, and we have Bamone's wife down here, and she's running the signaling board. And we just noticed on the board, she put down Hannah Fatigue. What does that mean? Are you sure of that? I think Babana is he's tired now. He's starting to get tired, so I said, Jackie, go. Uh, how important do you think it is for Jackie to win this Grand Prix? Is he just going strictly worried about championship points, which he's already wrapped up the championship, or does he want to win this race? No, for him now, the world champion is over. So he was coming here just to, to try to be good and try to be the American. But unfortunately, I think O'Mara is too strong. Johnny O'Mara is indeed strong. Since the opening lap, the Team Honda rider has conducted a clinic on how to ride motocross, a clinic that has taken him to a 26-second lead over Bob Hanna in second. My guess, though, is that Bob Hanna is not fatigued. He knows that O'Mara's 26-second lead is an insurmountable one. He has decided to back off the pace. He'll conserve his energy for motor number two. And Hanna signals that to his mechanic. Under international rules, if Hannah can come back and win moto number two, then he would be the overall winner. But none of that makes any difference to Jackie Vamone. The French world champion will ride just as hard as he can until he gets the check. And Jackie Vamone goes down. The slippery Unadilla track has taken its toll. That spill will put Vamone out of contention for second. And that moves Kawasaki-mounted privateer Billy Lyles, number 39 from Jackson, Georgia, into third. Lyles is being chased by Eric Kehoe, number 34 of Team Suzuki. And Kehoe dives under Lyles, and he takes over the number three spot. But here comes Lyles right back. The Kawasaki privateer is not going to give up at this late stage of the race. We're in the final lap, and every position will count in the overall standings. The riders are headed toward the bottom part of the track. 
Kehoe in yellow, and look at Lyles charging on the inside. He forced Kehoe out of his line and regained third. The ball is back in Kehoe's court. With less than half a lap remaining, it looks like a battle for third will go down to the wire. Lyles has the advantage, but this rough Unadilla track does not, and Kehoe bobbles. That should be all that Billy Lyles needs to sew up third. Out in front, Johnny O'Mara is just one corner away from victory in moto number one of the Nissan Motocross Grand Prix. O'Mara, over the final jump, lost the front wheel. The checkered flag is out, and the Osho. Johnny O'Mara from Team Honda wins moto number one. Behind O'Mara, here comes Hannah, all alone in second place. Hannah has put in a sterling performance. He's come from mid-pack to move into that number two spot. The championship will be decided in the second moto, and Hannah knows it. He's been here before. As Hannah takes the checkered flag, let's go to Gary Bailey, who's with the O Show. Johnny O'Mara, winner of the first moto of the 250 Grand Prix here at Unadilla. Johnny, how do you feel after that ride, and were you worried about Hannah catching up to you? Well, uh, at first he was uh, pretty up there, and I thought when he got in second, I was going to basically see what he had. And uh, I don't know if he was trying or if he just was saving it for the second moto, but I think the second moto is going to be a tough one between me and him. Do you think Bob's going to give it 100% in that next moto and try and show you? Do you think he was saving some? What's your opinion? What do you think? <laughs> yeah, I think Bob was probably saving. I think he knew he wasn't going to catch you, and so he was going to save everything he had and give it to you all in the next one. Johnny, great ride. Thank you. So Johnny O'Mara, with a 30-second advantage, wins moto number one. Behind O'Mara, American riders took the next three positions with Bob Hanna finishing second, Billy Lyles third, Eric Kehoe fourth. In fifth place was the top European, Peter Hansen from Sweden. Stay with us when we reach 50cc U.S. Motocross Grand Prix. While the riders are in the pits preparing for moto number two, let's look back at Unadilla action from 1985. That event was also a battle between Johnny O'Mara and Bob Hanna. O'Mara is out in front, but not for long. With feet off the pegs, Hanna made an impossible pass and took over the lead. But that was just the beginning. With that pass, both Hanna and O'Mara began riding the rough Unadilla track at much faster speeds than in earlier laps. That forced them into new lines, bumps, and ruts. Then Hannah went wide, and O'Mara somehow managed to dive to the inside, but he was going too fast to hold the line. The two riders collided with O'Mara's leg between them. In extreme pain, O'Mara backed off the pace and waved Hannah by. As the moto wore on, O'Mara gradually recovered. Toward the end, he was again able to ride at full speed. At the checkered flag, it was Hannah in one of the strongest rides ever seen at Unadilla. Moto number two should have been another classic battle, but instead, it turned into another Bob Hanna Unadilla jinx. On the opening lap, O'Mara stormed into the lead. Behind him, out of sight of the cameras, Hanna tangled with a group of riders and went down. From the back of the pack, Hanna put in an unbelievable ride, but came up short. The moto win and the 1985 Unadilla 250 Grand Prix crown went to O'Mara. Hanna finished fifth for second overall. That was 1985, but the Hannah O'Mara confrontation continues. With moto number two about to get underway, let's go to Gary Bailey, who's on the starting line. Larry, we're on the starting line for the start of the second moto. The weather conditions look a little bit better. It's cleared up. There's still a possibility of rain. However, the interesting thing is where Bob Hanna's lined up. He's lined up more to the inside. On the first moto, he started more on the outside. It's going to be interesting to see what kind of a start he gets from there. The interesting thing is that Hanna needs to win the second moto in order to take the overall. Back to you, Larry. Hannah did not get a good start in moto number one, but number 20, Johnny O'Mara did, and that was the difference. With moto number two about to get underway, we'll soon know if Hannah's adjustment will pay off. And there goes the gate. The race that will decide the Nissan Unadilla Motocross Grand Prix is underway. 40 of the best riders in the world are thundering through corner number one. Team Honda's Johnny O'Mara, the first moto winner, has the whole shot and a clear track ahead. Hannah got a good start and is currently running fifth as the pack heads and a pileup just seconds into the race. Four riders are down, but it appears they're all okay. Johnny O'Mara leads the field to the top part of the track, headed for the most spectacular and favorite obstacle at Unadilla, Gravity Cavity. 
O'Mara has no way of knowing, but he must assume that Bob Hanna is close behind. The strategy for both riders is cut and dry. Win at all costs. The one that does that will be the Unadilla champion. As the rest of the pack clears gravity cavity, the battle lines up front have been drawn. Hanna has moved to the number two position and is pounding Johnny O'Mara. For the first time today, he has the opportunity to study the Osho's line. O'Mara goes to the inside. Hanna going wide. There's an old saying in motocross, you can't pass if you choose to follow. Hanna knows it, and so do the fans as they cheer the hurricane on. Coming up is a 60-foot drop-off with a tight U-turn at the bottom. Only the tree dwellers can see the action there. And what they saw was a Bob Hanna pass. The hurricane has taken over the number one position. For 10 years, Hanna has tried to win Unadilla. For 10 years, he's come up short. The hurricane is close to retirement, and this could very well be his last opportunity. But to win, Hanna, who was once stabbed as the best in the world, will have to contend with a tough and unforgiving Unadilla racetrack and the determination of the rider behind him, Johnny O'Mara. And O'Mara shows that determination. He tried an inside pass on Hanna. He stuck his wheel into Hanna's leg and delivered a message. The race is not over yet. The two superstars are on the top part of the track, heading for Gravity Cavity. Hannah, now O'Mara, dive into the cavity. Coming out, they'll fly a full 70 feet in the air. The fans here at Unadilla are going wild. Let's go to Gary Bailey, who is trackside. Larry, the battle everybody's been waiting for between Hannah and O'Mara. Maybe this is Hannah's year, and he's going to get his first one. Hannah's showing the confidence as he comes over the top of the jump, making the pass on O'Mara, holding one hand up in the air. It looks like it's going to be a good race. Gary, from up here, it's a tremendous race. Two superstars going one-on-one -on -one for supremacy here at Unadilla. Hannah with a lead, and O'Mara dogging his every move. O'Mara's style is smooth, fluid, and precise. He flows with a track. Hannah, often with feet off the pegs, has a hard-charging style all his own. He attacks every inch of the track. This battle is a long way from being over. Stay with us. We'll be 250cc U.S. Motocross Grand Prix. Motor number two is winding down, and the battle for the lead and the overall win continues to rage. In front is Bob Hanna. Right behind him is Johnny O'Mara. Privateer Billy Lyles, meanwhile, has moved into the number three position. Behind Lyles is another American rider, Team Suzuki's Eric Kehoe, and Kehoe shoots off the side of the track and hits the spectator fence. Kehoe is all right, but that move will cost him position. Back to the leaders, and Johnny O'Mara is still dogging the rear wheel of Bob Hanna. The fans here at the Unadilla track, which is often touted as being one of the best in the world, are watching the race of a lifetime. O'Mara and Hanna are side by side down the finish line straight away. O'Mara cuts across the track behind Hanna. He's going to try a pass, and he makes it. The Team Honda rider has regained the number one position in moto number two. Earlier in the race, O'Mara had threatened Hanna in that same corner. But this time, with a great motocross move, O'Mara changed lines. He surprised Hanna and made the pass going into the corner. There is not much time left in the race, and now it's Hanna's turn to play catch the leader. O'Mara, out in front, has everything going for him. He's one of the best conditioned athletes in the world. His surprise pass has to have had an effect on Hanna, and O'Mara is taking full advantage of the situation. He's picked up the pace and is opening a huge lead. The Osho is riding one of the greatest races of his career and is headed for his second Unadilla win in a row. O'Mara, wait a minute. O'Mara is just coasting. I don't believe what I'm seeing. He took his left hand off the bar. He might be, no, he's reaching for the fuel valve on the gas line. On the last lap, O'Mara apparently has run out of gas. Bob Hanna in the number two position is going to inherit the lead. Unbelievable. There's O'Mara and Hanna rides by. I don't think Hanna even saw O'Mara. Hanna, with just a few corners remaining, is going to win Unadilla. For 10 years, he's tried. But every time, something similar to what just happened to O'Mara has happened to Hanna. And now, in what might be his final ride at Unadilla, the hurricane is being paid back. The checkered flag is out, and Bob, Hurricane Hanna, in an unbelievable sequence of events, is the winner of the Nissan 250 U.S. Motocross Grand Prix. 
The fans are going wild, and Hannah is bewildered. He thinks he finished second. Let's go to Gary Bailey, trackside. Bob Hanna, you have won Unadilla. What happened to Johnny O'Mara? I don't know. I've uh, lost a lot of them like this, breaking, but I never thought I'd win one like this. I don't, uh, I don't like it. How important was the age factor? Do you think that's what hurt you? I don't know what age factor did it, but he, that sucker's in shape, and he wore me out, and uh, I, I, I couldn't pick the right lines. You know, he outsmarted me. You know, he's a smart. He's great, and uh, I've got to apologize to a few people, the uh, spectators, for promising to win, and uh, Suzuki for promising to win. Uh, I won, but not the way I like to do it. Bob, congratulations. You finally got your Grand Prix win of the 250 at Unadilla, New York. For Johnny O'Mara, a dry gas tank turned what was almost the greatest ride of his career into what could be his biggest career disappointment. But for the legions of Bob Hanna fans at Unadilla, the end result could not have been better. They have stayed loyal to their favorite son through years of frustration and were finally rewarded with a Bob Hanna Unadilla win. Finishing second overall was privateer Billy Lyles with moto finishes of third and second. Team Suzuki's Eric Kehoe was third, with a third in moto number one and a seventh in moto number two. The top European, finishing fourth overall, was Jorgen Nielsen from Sweden. French star Jackie Bamone, who had already clinched the 250 World Championship, failed to finish either moto. Perhaps a new Unadilla Jinx is in the making. This year's Nissan 250 U.S. Grand Prix motocross was indeed one of the most exciting ever. From Unadilla Valley Sports Center at New Berlin, New York, for Gary Bailey, I'm Larry Myers saying so long until next year.